This is a raised garden bed DIY project. Typical wooden raised garden beds nail or screw the sides of the garden bed to scrap pieces of wood or anchoring posts. For this project, I'm going to use pocket screws to hold the boards together. I'm going to use the Craig Mini Jig Pocket Hole Kit to drill the pocket holes and use Craig Weather Resistant Pocket Screws. The pocket screw anchoring system uses less wood but requires more tools and a little bit more effort. But the build result is just as strong, maybe even stronger. When working with pocket screws, you'll need to know the thickness of the wood you'll be working with. The thickness determines the screw sizes to use and the positioning of the jig to bore out the holes. I'm working with 2x6s. The actual thickness is an inch and a half. The screws I'll be working with are 2.5 inches in length. Since I'm placing this outdoors, I'm also going to use the weather resistant screws. I'm going to start off with a 2x6 16 foot untreated redwood. I'm going with redwood because I want this thing to last. I'm playing it safe by going untreated. I don't want any chemicals leaching into the soil and eventually onto the food. The board will yield a 4 foot by 2 foot by 6 inch high raised garden bed. 6 inches isn't high enough so I'm going to double up and use another 2 by 6 by 16. This will result in a 4 by 2 by 1 foot high raised garden bed. To connect the 4 foot board to the 2 foot board I'm going to use a pair of pocket screws on each end of the short board. To secure the two levels together, I'm going to lock the four foot long boards with three pocket screws and the short boards with only one pocket screw. The 2x6x16 two by by untreated redwood I purchased at Home Depot. They saved me some time by cutting it down to four foot and two foot lengths. I'm adjusting the depth of the collar of the drill bit to four and a quarter inches from the step of the drill bit to the collar. This will vary depending on the thickness of the board you're using. Again, I'm using a 2x6. The actual thickness of a 2x is an inch and a half. To position the jig, I have to measure an inch and a quarter from the edge of the board to the edge of the jig. Again, this will vary depending on the thickness of the material you are using. To speed things up, I'm setting up a combination square to the inch and a quarter depth. I'm going to put a pocket screw in the middle of the board, so I'm measuring for the center. To secure the jig to the board, I'm using a pair of bar clamps. Before you actually bore the hole into the wood, you want to get the drill bit up to speed. Make sure to bore the hole to the correct depth. Stop when the collar meets the jig. First hole is done. Repeat the same procedure for the remaining holes. I'm working on the second four foot board. Similar to the first long board, this is gonna also have three holes for pocket screws. The holes on the long board are now complete. There are a total of six holes, three on two of the long boards. On the short board to connect the two levels, I'm just gonna use one pocket screw in the center. On the end of the shortboard, I'm going to use two pocket screws. This will connect the shortboard to the longboard. This is going to be a tedious task because I'm going to have to drill four holes on each of the shortboards. On the end pieces, I was able to only use one bar clamp, so that saved me a lot of time. One end board down, three more to go. Short board number two. Short board number three. Short board number four, the last one. All the pocket holes have been drilled. Next is assembly. For assembly, there are two methods. The first method is to assemble one level at a time and then connect the levels. Method two is to connect the long pieces to the long pieces in the short to the short and then connect it together. I'm using method two. I'm using multiple bar clamps as well as the clamp on the workbench to hold the pieces of wood together as I screw it in. 
I joined the short boards to the short boards and long boards to the long boards. Now it's a matter of combining the short with the long. I'm now working off of the workbench and directly onto the ground. It's a lot easier this way. When I attached the sides of the raised garden bed together, I attached it on the outside, meaning the holes and the screws are exposed to the elements, as opposed to the inside where the soil would be covering it up. Even though I'm using weather resistant screws, I want to protect it a little bit further by adding plugs. So I purchased Craig hole plugs. I'm going to use this to plug all the holes. The raised garden construction is complete. Now it's just a matter of finding a spot and preparing the ground to receive it. I found a good spot that has a lot of sun exposure and now it's just a matter of leveling out the ground and removing weeds. I weeded and leveled out the ground and now it's a matter of filling the garden bed. The total volume is approximately four times two times one or eight cubic feet. I'm not gonna fill it up to the top, so I'm gonna fill it up with seven cubic feet of topsoil, manure, and garden soil. Before adding the nutrient-rich soil mixture into the garden bed, I'm gonna lay down a weed barrier comprised of newspaper and paper bags. This is compostable, so it will break down and eventually will be absorbed. With the weed barrier complete, it's just a matter of adding the soil material into the garden bed. I'm going to open one cubic foot of topsoil and put that on top of the paper bags to keep the weed barrier from moving. I'm then going to add the manure, another cubic foot of topsoil, and then the big old three cubic feet of garden soil. And then I'm going to mix that all up together. And then the last bag of topsoil. The raised garden bed DIY project is now complete. This is a still of what I ended up doing. I planted six Thai dragon chilies and two shishito peppers. In the description, I added links to some of the materials I used. A full write-up with links, photos, and more good stuff can be found in my blog. That link is also in the description area. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.